Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a late 70s Ibanez bass. Um, this is a, a passive slash active bass. Um, very high quality, made in Japan, Ibanez. Very nice wood, very nice construction. Definitely professional grade. Looks like it has a very nice uh, ebony fretboard. Some perhaps ash on the top there. Uh, neck through, center block. Uh, it has a sandwich body, but just beautiful woods. Beautiful construction. I've already taken the back panel off because we're going to have to do some servicing on the on the module. Um, I've tested this. The passive electronics all work, but this module does not for some reason, and I believe it's down to that integrated circuit right there. I have gone online and uh, looked up the numbers, and that is a Texas Instruments. Uh, I know we're going to be upside down, but it's an MC1458P. I have ordered some of these. Um, pretty cheap part, um, so I went ahead and ordered several of them, and it looks like it might be a useful, a useful little uh, chip to have laying around for various purposes in the future, so I went ahead and bought a few of them. But we're going to replace that chip and see if that fixes the problem. This module actually disconnects here, so we'll, we'll take the module out and uh, desolder this, resolder it, and see if we can get this base to working again. But yeah, I thought this might be pretty cool, an opportunity to look inside one of these. There's the module part number, uh, MP-E0401. Nine volt battery, a couple of switches. And I think this thing is a 1979, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, very nice bass. There's a serial number beginning with JT. But super nice bass. Look at these uh, tuners. I think these might have been made by Gota in Japan. Or they might be Ibanez, I don't know. But they have these... I'm not sure if this is some kind of locking mechanism. I believe it is, actually. But the way it locks down is... is interesting. But yeah, at any rate, we're going to... Um, we're going to service the electronics on this. Uh, so let's... Uh, let's pull that little microchip out, or that little integrated circuit, rather, out of there. All right, anytime we're working with little boards like this, um, especially little integrated circuits and trying to get them off boards because there's so many legs, you actually have to, we have to, we're going to, you have to use some um, solder braid uh, or solder suckers to get these off. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see which connections we're, um, we're, you know, soldering on. So for this purpose, we're going to use one of these little helping hand mechanisms. Uh, you can get these, um, they sell these at Radio Shack. Uh, they, you can get them all over online, too. They also sell them at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. I think that that's where this one probably came from. Um, but here we, you can see it actually has a little magnifying glass, so it gives you a better look at the uh, other side. So we're going to try to get... We're going to try to get this off here without doing any damage to this circuit board. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but let's, uh, let's, let's do our best here. Okay, here's the bottom of the board with the IC chip out. Um, you can see where the uh, chip used to be here. And this is very difficult to um, to do this sort of thing uh, to begin with, but then to try to film it at the same time is next to impossible. So sorry I couldn't film the process of getting the thing off of there. Um, actually, I ended up going with, um, with my small uh, pen size... Uh, soldering iron rather than the rather than the gun um, and that's just to keep from burning the board and making a huge mess and I think I did okay with getting it off there let's see if we can get the new circuit in without doing any damage okay here are the new parts from uh, Texas Instruments uh, that are ordered 
And you can get these directly from their website. And what's really funny about ordering on their website is uh, whenever you go to check out, they have um, they have a little questionnaire that you have to a little box you have to check that says um, I will not use I will not use these uh, these chips to make bombs or um, <laughs> to to you know basically be a terrorist. Um, which is just silly as hell. I mean, that's like um, the little questionnaires they make you fill out whenever you, uh, whenever you're getting off a plane in a new country. <laughs> it's like, or well, the U.S. I think is the only country that really does this. But yeah, if you're flying internationally and you come into the U.S., they're uh, they have this questionnaire they hand you. It's like, yeah, I'm not just certifying I'm not a terrorist. Um, but they make you check a similar box whenever you're ordering from Texas Instruments uh, that you're not gonna use any of these for like any kind of guided missiles or ICBMs or any of that kind of crap which I thought was pretty comical um, like if you were a real terrorist you're gonna say oh you know yeah you know actually I was thinking about doing that but now that you mention it you know maybe it's not such a good idea but yeah here's the replacement part let's get it on the magnifying glass we can see a little better it's a direct replacement. So let's get it on this board and uh, see if we can bring this thing back to life. Okay, we have the new chip in there. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to bend over a couple of these, a couple of these legs. So we'll take one of these and bend it over. And we'll take another one on the other side and bend it over slightly uh, so that the chip tends to stay in while we're working on it and soldering it back in. Um, that's actually the way it was from the factory as well. So let's go ahead and bend the legs over and get this thing soldered back in. All right, there we go. We're soldered back in. We just got to do a little cleanup around the edges of these solder points uh, basically make sure nothing uh, making sure nothing is shorted and then we can put the module back in and see if um, see if it's done any good okay I have this new integrated circuit uh, soldered in here on this board and uh, unfortunately that did not fix the problem uh, so I'm going back through seeing if there's anything that I missed and sure enough it looks as if uh, there are a couple Zener diodes right here on the edge of this board. Um, there are two of them, in fact. One of them tests okay at about a half a volt, as you can see there. The other one is open lead. So I do not know how I missed that, um, but I did. So it wasn't the integrated circuit. It was actually this... Zener diode right here on the edge of the board. I don't know if you can see that once again, but that's yeah, that little guy right right there. So let me pop that out and put a new Zener diode in. And uh, well, we'll see if that fixes the problem. Okay, we have the module reinstalled here. I have the base plugged into my little shop amplifier back there in the back. My little KBA-15. You know, the awesome custom amp that is a shop staple here. Uh, we're going to try it. Let's see. This is the passive, I think. So that works, as it usually did. Here's the active. Much louder. So now our module does work. Uh, it was the diode all along, so I did not have to replace the integrated circuit. Uh, did anyway. Um, stupid me, I guess I missed that diode um, early on. So anyway, it is fixed. No harm, no foul. Uh, there is a new integrated circuit in there and it's identical to the uh, original one. Uh, so everything is well and this Ibanez base is ready to uh, ready to slay some heads again. Well, here, just so you know, I'm not making this up and it actually is fixed. Um, here's the switch that turns the uh, pickups to passive and active mode. That's an active mode. Passive. This seems to be a gain knob. Or maybe bass.
bass perhaps. Yeah, I think this is a three band EQ. That's what it seems to be. So yeah, there it is. Um, a 19, late 1970s Ibanez neck through bass. Really, really super nice bass. Um, I can see no fault with this thing. Very killer. If you have a chance to pick one of these things up, this is an amazing bass. Uh, and I highly, highly recommend this. So yeah, thanks again uh, for watching. If you guys haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button below to get uh, updates, future videos. And for now, you all take care.